In this video, we will discuss about asexual reproduction in ectocarpus. If we see the plant body of ectocarpus, uh, it has heterotrichous habit. Heterotrichous. This part is prostate system and this is its erect system. And it has filamentous plant body like it is rising in the form of filament and they are multicellular and cells they are placed one upon each other in the filament they are placed one upon each other like this right and this is its morphological structure vegetative structure but when it enters into reproduction this reproduces by the formation of sprangia and sprangia are of two types unilocular and plurilocular unilocular mean this is sprangium this will have a single locule right and when it is plurilocular this will have many locules many chambers and they reproduce by the formation of zoospores this sprangia they reproduce by the formation of zoospore and how this happen this will we are going to discuss in detail right we can see here this is the plant body of ectocarpus like we discussed and this is the unilocular sprangia and this is the plurilocular sprangia right when it has many locules and each cell here it can and its nucleus can divide to form many nuclei and they can get metamorphosed to form zoospores now these are the zoospores which are being produced here right so they are being produced with the help of sprangia first we are going to discuss about unilocular sprangia so uh, as we discussed this happens by the formation of zoospore and its zoospores they are motile right supposing this is zoospore this will bear two flagella right so when it bears two flagella this is called as biflagellate in nature right like we discussed two types of sprangia are being produced one is unilocular and second is plurilocular now first we are going to discuss about unilocular sprangia how they are being produced now this is the like we discussed it has a filamentous plant body and cells they are placed one upon each other at this point right here a protuberance will arise this is called as sprangia initial and this will have a single nucleus here this is the single nucleus right then this nucleus will divide by if it is a diploid nucleus then it will divide by meiosis cell division right and this diploid nucleus will divide to form first two nuclei then they will further divide to form four nuclei right so four nuclei will be produced like we can see here first two nuclei and then four nuclei are produced and these are haploid in genetic constitution like this was diploid this is diploid in nature This nucleus is diploid and these now are haploid nuclei see, right so we can see here lot of haploid nuclei have been produced like this these are haploid nuclei now in the sprangium if you see in the sprangium lot of haploid nuclei have been produced now they will accumulate a part of cytoplasm around them right like this and they will get converted to form zoospores like this now we can see here nuclei which are being produced after meiosis they are haploid in genetic constitution and each nucleus is going to get converted to form zoospore and this is its cytoplasm like this so we can see here lot of zoospores have been produced and it this sprangium has a single chamber so it is called as unilocular right so uh, when it, this sprangial initial have been produced this will further divide to form a stock cell and sprangium right so this this part is called as stock cell and here like we discussed meiosis will take place and haploid nuclei are produced they will accumulate a amount of cytoplasm around them and get converted to zoospore now if we see each zoospore here this is about uh, we can say pear shape right and shape is pear shape two flagella are there by flagellate in nature flagella they are unequal this is longer and this is smaller right then we can see here this part is having eye spot which can sense the light 
and this is the chromatophore which will have pigment like chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C, carotenes, xanthophylls and this is the nucleus and little bit of cytoplasm. So this is the zoospore which is motile, motile me, this can move from one position to another position, right. So this can swim, this can move because of the pair of flagella which are present here. One is toward this direction and second is toward this direction and two flagella. So this is biflagellated in nature. And another thing which is very clear that diploid nucleus have been converted to haploid nuclei. So all the zoospores they will be haploid in genetic constitution. Right. And these zoospores later on which are haploid in genetic constitution they will develop into haploid plant body. Haploid plant body. because it is being produced after meiosis. So unilocular haploid zoospores, they will germinate to form haploid thallus of the ectocarpus. Because they are being produced after meiosis, so they are called as meiozoospore. Meio mean meiosis and zoospore uh, like you know what are zoospores, right. So these are asexual reproductive bodies of the ectocarpus in the unilocular sporangium. Now we will discuss about plurilocular sporangium how this occurs, how this is being produced, right. Again, same way like we discussed, uh, ectocarpus like this is thallus of ectocarpus, right. And here a sporangial initial will arise, right. And this sporangial initial will further divide to form two cells. Then this can divide transversely to form four cells like this. And this will develop also develop a stalk cell here, right. So this will divide into many cells. First by transverse divisions. And then this will start dividing by vertical divisions like this. Right. So ultimately this will get converted to like this will divided vertically as well as transversely like this. Right. So every cell here like this is one cell like this having a single nucleus. Uh, if the thallus is deployed so all the cells here they will be deployed in genetic constitution. Right. And each cell will get metamorphosed to form the zoospore, right. And here the, from this point this can rupture to release the zoospores. So we can see here in the figure. Now this is the first cell which is called as sporangial initia, right. Its nucleus will undergo mitotic cell division. This will undergo mitosis like in the previous we, we discussed about meiosis, right. So this will enlarge to form a sporangial initial. This will develop into stalk cell. This, this will further divide by transverse divisions like we discussed. This will again enlarge and divide. Then this will divide by vertical division. Ultimately this will get converted to uh, plurilocular sporangium. In many chambers are there. This is called as plurilocular. And each cell will get metamorphosed to form the zoospore. Later on this can rupture to release the lot of zoospores. And all these zoospores, if this is diploid thallus, now this will be diploid in genetic constitution. And structure of the zoospore is same like we discussed earlier. This will bear a pair of flagella. This will be pear shaped. This will have nucleus. This will have chromatophores, right. So this will divide to form many zoospores and they will be released. If they are diploid in genetic constitution, then this will develop into diploid sporophytic plant body when these zoospores they germinate they will develop into diploid sporophytic plant body. Now we can discuss its theory develops from terminal cell of the branchlet like terminal cell. <coughs> so this is the sporangial mother cell this will divide by transverse division like we discussed into 6 to 12 cells then they will divide vertically also this will develop into a multicellular plant body. By repeated vertical and trans transverse division, this will develop into 20 to 40 transverse tires. Tires mean this is one tire, the second, third, fourth, sixth and so on 20 to 40 transverse tires will be produced. And protoplasm of each cell will metamorphose to form biflagellated zoospore. 
Now this will this open to liberate the zoospores like here, right? And then they will germinate to form the diploid sporophytic plant body. And these all the zoospores they will be diploid in genetic constitution. So this is how reproduction take place by the formation of plurilocular sporangium. Now we have discussed in detail. This is the unilocular sporangium. This is the plurilocular sporangium. This is going to going to produce the zoospores. If they are being produced after meiosis, they are called as meiozoospores. And if they are being produced after mitosis, they are called as zoospores. If they are haploid, they will germinate to form haploid plant body. If they are diploid, they will germinate to form the uh, diploid plant body. Now we'll discuss how these zoospores they will germinate, germination of zoospores, and how they. Uh, develop into young plants or they form thallus of ectocarpus. Now we have discussed about structure of zoospore. So zoospore is having nucleus then this is red eye spot or stigma which is going to sense the light as uh, chromatophore which is going to have the pigments and this is the pair of flagella pear shaped plant body. Now first step when this is uh, going to germinate now this will develop into like this is the zoospore right now this will round off like this and develop a wall right so this will round off this will develop a wall this rounding off is called as rounding of zoospore and jo flagella hai iske khatam ho jayenge nahi rahenge so this is called as resorption of flagella ab yahan pe hum dekh rahe hain koi flagella nahi hai aur ye round off ho gaya aur isne wall bhi develop kar li hai अब क्या होगा नेक्स्ट स्टेप नेक्स्ट स्टेप क्या होगा इसमें ऐसे करके डिवीजन होनी शुरू हो जाएगी राइट लाइक दिस तो हमने ये देखा कि ऐसे डिवेल्प हो जाएगा फिर इसमें क्रोमेटोफोर्स डिवेल्प हो जाएंगे जिसको जो इसको ग्रीन कलर देंगे और उससे इसका फोटोसिंथेटिक प्रोसेस स्टार्ट हो जाएगा और जो लोअर सेल है वो विदाउट क्लोरोप्लास्ट होगा वो इसको फिक्सेशन में मदद करेगा तो हम यहाँ देख सकते हैं कि ऐसे करके ये एनलार्ज हो गया है ऐसे करके राइट एंड ऊपर जो है यहाँ पर ऐसे क्लोरोफिल वगैरह यहाँ आप कह सकते हो क्रोमेटोफोर्स डिवेल्प हो जाते हैं और यहाँ पर ऐसे एक सेल बन गया है लाइक दिस राइट अब फिर से ये एनलार्ज होगा और एनलार्ज हो जाएगा और यहाँ पर हम देखेंगे कि दो सेल बन जाएंगे ठीक है फिर तीन सेल बन जाएंगे सो so, ऐसे करके डिविजन्स होंगे यहाँ हम देख सकते हैं न्यूक्लियस एज डिवाइडेड टू फॉर्म लाइक दिस बाय Uh, mitotic cell division this has divided to form nuclei and they will develop cytoplasm and chromatophore to develop into a uh, you can say thallus cells and in this way filament will be produced of the ectocarpus so formation of new filament will take place and ultimately this will develop into young thallus of ectocarpus and if zoospores they are haploid this will develop into haploid thallus and if zoospores they are diploid this will develop into diploid thallus this is called as sporophytic in nature and this is called as gametophytic in nature so ultimately zoospores they will develop into a young thallus of ectocarpus this will develop branches also like this we can see here branches this is its prostate system this is its erect system so this is how in in ectocarpus reproduction take place by the formation of uh, zoospores like we discussed asexual reproduction occurs by the formation of zoospores and zoospores they are biflagellate in nature and there are two types of sporangia are being produced unilocular and plurilocular unilocular will produce haploid zoospore they will germinate to form haploid thallus and plurilocular plant body will produce diploid zoospores and they will germinate to form diploid thallus so this is all about asexual reproduction in ectocarpus Uh, thank you for watching my video if you like my video please like share and subscribe and if you want to ask any questions you can ask me in the comment box